All right, this is just another representation of the Stromberg. This is a different drawing, same thing. Got the back suction channel, have the main vent channel, and the channel going over to the top of the float bowl. So shown in what, full rich. So it's getting mostly green, just a tiny bit of blue suction on it. If we close off this valve right here, make that smaller, then you're not gonna get as much vent channel. If you don't get as much vent channel, that means that the back suction channel starts to win, starts pulling air out this way. And as soon as the, this pressure gets closer to the discharge nozzle, it will go rich or lean. Lean. Oh, thank you for two of you who are paying attention. Oh. When, uh, <coughs> when the circuit's on idle, uh, the the lower pressure in the manifold sucks out the fuel from the idle. Yes. Tube? Yes. And again, in idle, that's mostly closed off, so everything here is just yellow. It's ambient. Well, I guess green would be the color on this drawing. It's ambient. So this is yellow, or sorry, this is green, that is green, that is green, that is green, and that is green. Everything's green below it. At that. All right. Well, now where should I go since I went all over the place? What should we talk about now? <laughs> <laughs> Who has questions? Who has questions? Acid, ethanol, economizer valve. Yeah. All right. So let's talk. All right. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much and you feel like, okay, I've got this. But now let's talk about the economizer system. also called, AKA, also known as power enrichment. All right, so between us, we're gonna get our nomenclature straight here, but then you're gonna have to understand that not everybody's gonna join us. So carburetors run rich at idle because that's the way we're supposed to set them up, correct? And they run rich at idle because... Don't what? No There's no choke. Some people are gonna say it's for extra cooling. Just nod, just sure. If that's what you want, fine. It's because there's no choke. All right. Carburetors run very rich at full power because Because detonation is an issue, because heat, their extra fuel provides cooling, so it does cool. Let's see what we got here. Right. I want my favorite chart. There. So I tried to pay a little more attention when I took off the other day my airplane and I messed with the EGT a little bit and watched it, and I figure I'm running a little over 200 degrees rich of peak on takeoff, roughly. So um, I think my, my cylinders peaked out, is it about 14? Uh, I only went up like 4,000. So um, I peaked out about 1,400. And remember, it's just a function of where the probes are. If I put them higher, I would have peaked at 1,500. Um, so you can't really look at that, but I peaked out about 1400, uh, was my peak EGT at 4,000 feet at about 65% power. And at takeoff, I was running around, um, 1200 degrees. So about 200 degrees, uh, cooler. So we run rich on takeoff, we run rich at idle for different reasons, but in the middle where we're cruising, we don't want to burn a bunch of fuel. Let's see, where's my red fin? There we go. The red fin. I like that one. 
we're down here at 65% power or less or 60%. So we're down in here and that's uh, um, oh, 50 degrees rich of peak puts us right. Well, that's right there. So about 100. Yeah, it's, it's about a good chart, I guess. That's about what I believe when I'm flying. So anyway, in the middle, when we're cruising, we don't need an excessively rich mixture. And so the nice folks uh, who made the carburetors for us often find a way to automatically lean it out a little bit. So you're going to get this curve that a, a rich lean curve that will be, we'll make rich up here. So rich lean um, idle and watt. What's watt? Wide open throttle. So it starts out rich, gets lean, and goes up. So in this area here, at about the 65% power, um, it's just a very crude graph here. It's definitely at its lean, and the carburetors, they try and find a way to do it all by themselves. So um, that's the natural tendency of the carburetor. And if you find a way to make it a little bit leaner in the middle, what name would you give that? Economizer, the power enrichment. I would call that an economizer. If you have a carburetor that finds a way at a certain point, and one of the carburetors, the way they do it is they add a channel that just happens to have a little back suction to the um, float bowl at a certain setting. So if you could add a little bit of suction and bring that rich chart down a little bit, I'd call that economizer. And if I had a carburetor that was kind of, you know, lean all the way down, but when I got to 65% power started going up, I'd call that power enrichment. That's me. They didn't ask me. So they might call it power enrichment. It may, may take a carburetor that is rich all the way that back suctions it in the middle, brings it down and does some economizing. They might call that a power enrichment. I won't. I'm going to call them economizer. I'll say, oh, that's more like an economizer system. But the carburetors won't. If you read the book, it'll say, well, the power enrichment works by, you know, this. I'm like, oh, it's really kind of leaning it out. Well, yeah, it is. So just understand that when I say power enrichment, I mean, we're adding fuel at the end. If I talk about economizer, it means we're taking it out in the middle. So we have economizer systems, um, also known as power enrichment. So when you read the manuals, you might get... One, you might get, they might call it one, it might call it the other. It might work one way, it might work the other. Hopefully, you can know the difference. And, and when you're talking to me, go, yeah, this really looks more like an economizer than a power enrichment. And we can talk the same thing, be like, cool. So, let's see, to, regardless of the name, regardless of the name, it enriches the mixture. above crew settings. Which is 60 to 70 percent is cruise. So it just keeps the mixture, keeps mixture at cruise from being too rich. You know, for those pilots who are taught never to touch the red knob, ever. Uh, two, adds extra fuel at high power settings. At high power settings. So you can look at it one way or the other. It's just doing the same thing. Um, let's talk about I've got five different types here. Five different types. And I have pictures. Let's see. Economizer systems. Type one. And this is the 
part in your career where I'm hoping that you can just start looking at diagrams and going, I see how that works. That makes sense. So this particular type is the needle type. And if we dissect a little bit, we have the float chamber over here. And we have a passageway with the main metering jet. And it comes up and we have a main air bleed, which causes the fuel to emulsify goes out and goes engine and we also have another passageway with another main metering jet although they call it an economizer metering jet and it comes up and adds more fuel so what you can see here is this needle is connected to this throttle and when this throttle is opened meaning we have more air flowing through it is going to lift this needle out of its seat and we now have two paths for fuel to go with two metering jets adding more fuel, so two passageways. And then when we go back to cruise, it's gonna drop down in there and shut down this bottom one, and so we just have one passageway for just cruise settings. Simple? simple. Very simple. <clears throat> and you can see that it's gonna be adjustable and for, for the right settings and stuff. Uh, this one's called a piston type economizer. And let's see if we can dissect this a little bit right now we've got uh, let's see fuel in the float bowl main metering jet right there main air bleed economy uh, emulsified fuel going out and everything is just kind of running normal but then we get into wide open throttle see where it economized right there now we get into wide open throttle and this lifted up a little bit or did it drop down drop down so this dropped down which allowed fuel to go through this other passage right here work its way into this chamber and it got a little bit of air from um, little holes right there to emulsify its own fuel and just added a whole nother bypassed the main metering jet and the main discharge nozzle all together and just added a whole nother little spot right there. But it's the same concept. It's just a parallel passageway. So it opened up a parallel passageway. Um, yeah, that one was just one same passageway, more fuel. Oh, well, the other one actually had this two. This one, is that air valve two. helping mix or emulsify fuel and tell what that is? So the upper piston, piston air valve? valve? Yeah, yeah, helping emulsify okay. as it goes through that little jet right there, if you will. Okay. All right. This one's funny because it has a dash pot, which is cool. Dash pot. Dash pot. I don't know if this is true, but uh, give, you, give your brain half a break here. When I was in A&P school, I had a teacher who was somewhat notorious. He's not with us anymore um, on this planet. And he said this, and I will not forget it. Somebody called the instrument panel the dashboard. And he got kind of ugly about that. Don't ever call it a dashboard again. Do you know what a dashboard is? I don't know what a dashboard is. Well, according to him, a dashboard was on a horse-drawn uh, wagon. And it was the thing down below. It had... I don't know about this. He said that it was it had to it repelled the the um, where the horses would pee while they were going along. The dash would come out. He called it dash. I don't think that's true. But anyway, the pee would slosh up on the people, and so the dashboard was to hold back the urine from hitting the passengers. And since we don't have horse-drawn airplanes, we don't have dashboards. They're instrument panels. But now I have a dash pot, which always makes me think of him, and it's probably filled with horse pee. But anyway. <laughs> This economizer is kind of cool because now we're getting into some automatic stuff, which we're going to start looking at more automatic compensated stuff. So this goes back to the first type we have. If you think about it, it's just a needle type that was connected to directly to the throttle. But now we've separated it out from the throttle and it can start sensing density altitude. So on those days when it's really, really hot here, this would work. And so we could adjust the fuel flow for that. So what we have, a dash pot is really um, a shock absorber, if you will. That's really all that is. Um, and then we have a spring um, force upwards, which is pushing this up. So it's trying to push up and close that. But we have an evacuated bellows, which is, we're going to talk a lot about bellows. So um, bellows is a um, sealed container with a, corrugations, I guess is the word I want. And when air is hot, the air in it will expand. And so if we look at it, 
the fulcrum is right there. So the spring, spring is helping this right here, the bellows. So as air heats up, or we go up in altitude, right? I, bag of chips, you take your bag of chips and you go on the airplane and you buy them at the, the, the duty-free shop because you want duty. And uh, you get in the airplane like, I actually had one blow up on me on my trip to Florida. I'm like, ooh, made a mess. Um, but anyway, um, so bag of chips, they expand in the aircraft. Well, that's here's your bag of chips. So we go up in altitude. This starts to expand. Spring helps us out a little bit and it starts lifting this up and we have the shock absorber here. So it just moves slow and this rises up and seals this off. Why did it seal it up? Because we went up in altitude and we don't need extra fuel. We come down in altitude and our bag of chips right here, it starts to compress. As it compresses, it comes down. This comes down, opens up because we're at low altitude and there we go. Now, in this particular case, so we could have this open to atmosphere and it would be somewhat compensate for just atmosphere. In this particular case, you see they've added this one to manifold pressure. So it's gonna go directly up to right here basically. So it just, I don't know, they could have just finished drawing it. It's gonna go right here. So when this is closed, we are going to have what kind of pressure here at idle? Lots of suction, yeah? So suction here, very low pressure. Very low pressure, is this going to expand or contract? Expand, low pressure. Think of the airplane going up in the air, bag of chips. So it's gonna expand. It expands, it's going to? It's gonna close that, shutting off the fuel. All right, so now we, um, If we're part, th it's really more of a part throttle thing, um, but I just did it that way, it's easier. So part throttle, we have still low pressure, uh, same effect. As we open this up, the pressure up here is gonna get closer to atmospheric, about one inch less. You're gonna lose one inch of air across the Venturi in this restriction right here. So if it's 30 inches outside, we look at the barometer and it's like, oh look, it's 30 inches today. Right in here, it's gonna be about 29, unless it's turbocharged or um, supercharged coming this way. Anyway, about 29. So we got 29 here. So uh, that's pretty high pressure. So if we got high pressure, this is going to contract. contract, pushing the rod down, allowing more fuel to go through. Um, no, is it? Oh, the on the other side. Yeah, fulcrum's right there. I couldn't see where the... Yeah. Oh. No? Yeah. Like, yeah. No? <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's all there is to that one. Let me see. Is the... Um, the Stromberg or the um, other one we're working on? Has none of these. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so all right. This one... I have noticed, by the way, some errors in the Str Marvel Shebler book. They even talk about something with a valve and all this craziness. I'm like, that just doesn't exist. You might run across it. And if you, so if you're reading something and you're like, I read it and I'm doing exactly what, and that is not there. Let me know. And I'll go, oh yeah, that's the, and right there, that's not colored in. So, um, so this is the Marvel Shebblers, okay, the one you're going to be working on. And this has the back suction type. <laughs> Not all of them have back suction. This is the MA4SPA. There's like the MA4PA. There's the MA4, there's all different ones. And even within the class, you might get one or the other. So this particular one, we look right here, atmospheric bowl vent, um, economizer hole. So it's got an economizer, uh, the economizer channel. So that is important. So this is the economizer channel and the economizer hole. And if you can kind of make somewhat heads or tails of this, there's the uh, throttle plate in wide open throttle. There's the throttle plate when it's closed. So it's going to kind of roll up that way. So I don't, the book doesn't explain this really at all. Um, 
In fact, they could have colored this in blue too, I suppose. But what we know is gonna happen is the economizer at some point has to lean out the carburetor or enrich in the carburetor. This is directly tied to the bowl vent. So let's just think this through for just a second. If we add pressure here, it will enrich in or economize it. Okay, if we take away a little pressure, it will. Okay, if we take away pressure, it'll be an economizer. If we add pressure, it's going to be power enrichment, really. All right, so what can we make of this? If the throttle is in idle right here, this is going to all be what kind of pressure? ambient, atmospheric, so really I'd say that has very little effect on this. As we start to open it, I'm not sure this drawing is drawn correctly. I think it's slightly backwards. Um, okay, I'm gonna tell you what my memory is. I haven't looked at this carburetor now in a year. I'm pretty positive that they've drawn this a little bit backwards, and what happens is as the throttle starts opening, it lines up at a certain point somewhere around here and the alignment of the throttle valve creates a low pressure in this area because I can create a venturi out of anything. And so, yeah, I think the drawing is a little crooked. Yeah, the throttle thing tips down a little bit. So it's the opening down. Right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. This doesn't go up, this one tilts down. So as this tilts down, Number one, as it lines up with this, it's going to create a Venturi effect through here. And as it creates a Venturi effect through here, it is going to draw a low pressure here, which is going to cause it to economize. As this opens a little bit more, um, you're gonna start losing that economy. The problem I have with this drawing right here is it makes it look like it's about 1,000 RPM to 1,200 RPM, which I don't really think is the case. It's going to have to economize it somewhere around 2,000 RPM or so, um, depending on the engine. But anyway, that's what we're looking for, is it's going to draw suction on this tube at certain throttle position settings, causing this to go just a little bit leaner, causing it to economize. So that's... That's really all it is, the back suction. So we call it a back suction economizer. So you're going to look for that. Some of the carburetors have them. Some of them don't. Some of these carburetors will have passageways and um, restrictions in them, and they go to nothing. And it'd be kind of they just make them all and then put them all together. And they're all made in a big mold, you know. They're all and then they do that. Um, that made no sense, but. They have options that don't get used, we'll put it that way. All right, what else can I say about that? Um, options that don't get used, that's for like the same body for one engine. But yep, different. yeah, they don't make, Changeable. yeah, same body for like all of them. Right. And then they'll put even put, put some parts in it and then it'll go on a different bowl or something that doesn't have it drilled that use that or something like that. So yeah, I don't know why that like that's not colored in anyway all right so that's the back suction type that'd be the most common um oh and then i don't think i have a drawing for this one i do this is the big boy this is the ma4-5s the ma4 spas and the ma4s are this but the ma4-5 it's a whole different animal it's twice the carburetor it's like that big it's off the 180s. They use a whole different kind of system up here, which is pretty cool and more complicated. But you can see that based on throttle position, it has a cam that will adjust an economizer needle, which will vent air off of, this has got to be the main discharge nozzle. So it'll vent air through here. And so as we go uh, down rich, as we go more towards full throttle, it's going to close this off which closes off an air bleed, which I believe is a vacuum right off of this because this is the discharge nozzle that's open up to the Venturi area. And so you can see it's just another way of doing an air bleed. So it's not that you have to memorize this or anything, um, but you can see that it's 
just another way to do an air bleed system. So that's the most prevalent way. This is actually a, a pretty neat system. If you have the time, it's one of the extra projects and um, you'll see how you actually have to set the economizer needle settings and it's rather interesting. The big boy. The big boy. Yeah, this one. How many barrels? Yeah. One. <laughs> They'll have one. <laughs> there you go. That's that needle right there. Not that it matters, but all right. Question. Yes. Why are any of these necessary when I'm manually adjusting the mixture myself? I don't know. <laughs> There are some carburetors that have nothing. So. All carburetors that have a manual mixture control? Yeah, it has a manual mixture, but it doesn't have any sort of economizer. So, does this like override a manual or does it augment the manual? Augments. So, if you did nothing, it's going to lean it out a little bit in the cruise settings. So, if you're flying along at, say, 2,000 feet, and you pull it back to 65% power, it's gonna lean itself out a little bit. Okay. And then you shove the throttle in, then it'll richen it up for you. So it, it runs rich lean at that setting. Now you go up to 10,000 feet, and you're like, well, this is way too rich. So you manually lean it, but if you add more throttle, it'll richen it a little bit on its own. Assist. Assist, I guess, yeah. Relative. Yeah, relative, yeah, relative. Okay, should write some notes for you. Let me see, economizer systems, we, that's where we were. I had the five types. I'm not gonna write a million things about this. We had the needle type. Needle type, let's see. That used a second passageway. Uh, we had the piston type. Um, that also had a second passage with the piston. We had the, um, the manifold pressure type. Manifold pressure type, but um, it also kind of had a second passage in it too, didn't it? With the dash pot, that is correct. And four, we had the back suction. Back suction type. So since that is the most prominent, I'll write what I wrote for my notes in cruise power. Vacuum is applied to the float bowl. Which lowers the f oh, that's not right. Uh, vacuum is applied to the float bowl, which lowers the pressure in the um, float chamber. Note that it does not change the position of the floats themselves. So don't say we add suction and it makes the float go up or the float go down. Float floats, pressure doesn't affect it. Um, in the float chamber, let me see. Uh, according to the FAA book, so your, your textbook, as the throttle is opened, as throttle is opened, and pressure in the manifold um, is what, increased or decreased as the throttle is opened? Decreased. What? 
increased. increased, right? And pressure in the manifold is increased. Um, so is the pressure in the fuel bowl. So is the pressure in the float bowl. Oh, then we have the air bleed type. MA4-5. Um, so large marble carbs for use a needle valve that is controlled by the throttle. So, so it uses a needle valve controlled by the throttle. Full throttle, the needle valve is closed, it is closed, which enriches the mixture by closing off. Um, an air bleed. Tell me when you're done. By closing off the uh, air bleed, that, allow that allows more pressure in the Fuel chamber, is that why it enriches more? Yeah. Okay. It's not sucking it out. Uh, and then somebody once said this, that carburetors are also set up so that, and I actually found a picture of this. I thought, oh, that's awesome, because I was taught this a long, long time ago. Like your Stromberg has no economizer system, but yet when you start to climb, it's put together in such a way, and you'll have to look at this and verify it, that where the fuel was normally at this level, like that, the distance of the fuel on top of the needle, um, which would represent then the fuel on top of the main discharge nozzle, was this much. But then when you go into a climb, because the angle of the carburetor, the head pressure, if you will, this puts this down lower with this is lower that's more pressure more pressure uh, allows a little bit extra rich mixture while you're climbing I don't know how true that is but I did find a picture that showed it still don't know if it's true okay all right so let's see we talked about the mixture control system I guess that puts me kind of back on track and needle port oh can we do that so that, that, theory would yep. work, that theory would work the same way as if you were declining in altitude as far as the level, it wouldn't. Sure, yeah, yeah, when you're going this way. Yeah. Opposite. Okay, so we had the mixture control. I said there's only two types this time. So let me see. I don't have X mine. Economizer. Oh, AMCs. Okay, here's where I am. Mixture controls. All right, we talked about, we already talked about mixture controls, right? And I said there are basically the two types. There's the Stromberg has which type? Back suction. Back suction, there we go. And then the Marvel Shovelers have the? Needle. Needle type. All right. Okay. Um, let's see, eh, it's a representation of the back suction, if it helps you at all. Maybe I'll just screw with you a little bit. Yeah, we don't need it. We've already talked about it. Um, this is a needle type mixture control. Just a way of, another way of drawing it. So this would be the mixture handle. And so fuel comes out through the float chamber, through here, around, through the um, main metering jet 
and then up to the discharge nozzle and out. And when you go into the idle cutoff, this needle is going to fall down into there, cut it off, and then nothing flows out at all. The engine dies, or you have the intermediate positions, which would then override the size of the main metering jet. So this is the type that I'm like, I'm not going to write anything about it. Um, I think this is an old, old Stromberg. The airport type, where basically it just had a little throttle valve over here. Here's the throttle valve here. Had a little one on the side, and you can just open it up and just leak a bunch of air in there. And so that would lean things out for sure, wouldn't it? So, but I'm just going to let that go. All right. Automatic mixture controls. Well, you know, pilots are pretty lazy. So we don't want to actually reach over and touch the red knob. And that's just like, I said, you got to set your beer down and reach over there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Although I don't know of very many carburetors that have an automatic mixture control, everything else we're going to talk about has the potential or does have an automatic mixture control. So we really need to learn how they work, which is really exactly how the one with the dash pot works. It's just automatic mixture control. But we want to be able to look at and understand automatic mixture controls. When we see any sort of bellows system, a sealed bellows, we instantly want to know what's going on with the sealed bellows. Why is it there? What does it do? How does it do it? And they're not hard at all. So in this particular sealed bellows, we can see a passageway down here and a needle that goes up and down. So if this needle is all the way down, it's blocking off this passage and that would be lean. And if this needle goes up and opens up this right here, then we have another passage which will make it rich. Okay, so now we're just going to look at what happens here. So we have a spring. This represents a spring, these five, six dots right here, pushing up. So it's trying to push up on this whole system and pull the needle up with it. So it's default setting or it aids it to rich. Now, as we go up in the atmosphere, we have a sealed bellows, has an inert gas in it. Uh, this is vented to the atmosphere, so it can sense the, sense the atmosphere, and it's our potato chip bag. So we go up in the atmosphere, and the air gets thinner and thinner. So what is my sealed bellows going to do? Expand. So when it expands, it is going to, it only has one way to go because this is all blocked up here. It has to push down. As, that is, as it expands, it's going to push down on the needle, causing this passage to be blocked off, which will then lean out the carburetor because it says lean when it puts down. And that's 20,000 feet. So this is one hello carburetor. Automatic. All right, so here's one way we could do it. And we could look at this one, kind of dissect it. So we have, uh, let me see, back suction bleed right there. We know what that's for, don't we? Back suction bleed, what is that doing? Back suction means? Reducing pressure in the float ball. It's a suction. Just look where it is. Suction. Sucking, sucking air out of there. All right. And this is the vent coming in. So we can take a look at it and go, oh, okay, I get that. So if we want to run rich, we can't let this thing win, can we? Uh, that thing wins. It's going lean. So we got to give it a bunch of air to satisfy that. So there we go. So this thing, when it is compressed bellows because we're in thick atmosphere down low it's going to compress mm -hmm. it's going to open up that passage it's going to open up this passage and let a lot of air in there and there's just a little tiny there's a, even an orifice there so it's got a little bit of suction on there so we've got 10 pounds of air coming in here and only have a quarter pound of suction on there i'm making up numbers and so there's more than enough air to supply all the pressure needs here, plus the leak out of there, so it will have no effect whatsoever. But as we start to go up in altitude, what does that say? Needle position, automatic controlled by air pressure on bellows, course, altitude, altitude and temperature. So as we go up in altitude, this thing will expand, expand blocking off part of my vent. And as we start blocking off part of the vent, this suction is going to start having a bit of an effect right here. So it's going to lower the pressure in here, 
relative to, well, it's going to lower the pressure. And if the pressure here is a little bit more equal to this, then Lean. leans it out. And the air pressure here versus the air pressure here is called? Dang, look at you guys. Damn. <laughs> Kelly said you're a bunch of dummies. <laughs> <laughs> She did not say that. Yeah, yeah. I just make it. <laughs> All right. Wow, we did pretty good. For planning purposes, let me ask you guys this. Test questions. Would you rather, because I, I could probably pull it together and we could do the test on Thursday or we could do it on Monday. I'll say Thursday. So it's all fresh. Thursday? Thursday. Thursday? Okay. We'll shoot for Thursday. What's that? Does that include a Wednesday review? Um, yeah, I'll spend all, oh, I got to finish off a little bit here because tomorrow's Wednesday and then um, yeah, we'll review at the end and then go over it maybe uh, again a little bit more because we, we covered a lot. So automatic mixture. Uh, let's see, with the use of a bellows, um, mixture controls can be made automatic. Let me see. So automatic mixture. We'll just put uses um, a sealed bellows as altitude increases, pressure drops. And bellows expands. And really, it just depends on the, the use you're going to do with it. We looked at two different ones. One where it, it um, allowed more fuel to flow. One where it uh, or restricted fuel. Another one where it restricted air. So um, I don't know what else I can write about that. You just have to kind of look at wh the how it's going to work. Um, like I said, I wish I had the drawings of the Rotax, but all the Rotaxes, uh, carbureted engines apparently, use an automatic mixture control. It's, it's quite large. Um, about that big sits on top of the carburetor and it has a bellows in it that actually they did show a quick picture but they said due to copyright laws you cannot take a picture of any of our slides come on man um, For the students. I know uh, because then guys like me bring it back here and teach you guys how to work on Rotax they don't want that um, they can get their 500 bucks I shouldn't say that I'll edit that part out um, so anyway it had a, had a bellows on the top and so the the um, these carburetors were more like a, um, they remind me of the two-stroke, the carburetor on my Honda dirt bike, where it had a slide instead of a throttle valve, had a slide with a needle on the bottom. Are you guys familiar with that? Okay, so, and what it did is, um, as you went up in atmosphere, it uh, had a bellows on top with, um, I don't remember exactly where it was sensing it, where the springs were, but um, the point is, uh, the bellows would move up as you, I think it had to move down. Bellows moved one way or the other, depending on the carburetor works, and I guess it would drop. It would drop the needle back down a little bit, restricting some of the fuel that would go through. So you'd have to kind of know those carburetors if you ever worked on a motorcycle, know the valve and needle arrangement. But my point being, it had a bellows on it. The bellows was affected by the atmosphere. The atmosphere then made a change inside of the carburetor, which caused it to go lean. So the Rotax does not even have a mixture control in it. I thought the Remos did, but anyway. Okay, I guess that's uh, pretty much it, huh? Go away, man. Good day, good day. <laughs>